Good morning, Niles. Good morning, Walter. Hope y'all doing all right. Some people rolling in. All right, let me see. Let me get y'all for attendance. Niles is here. Walter's here. Uh, good morning, Rosalinda. Okay. All right, y'all. Since y'all are here, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. Um, today, we're going to go over two readings, and you have one writing assignment. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at those, starting with sharing my screen for Canvas. All right. So, of course, your daily reminders to always check your announcements and calendar. Nothing too new on your announcements other than your most recent things are like a copy of some of the Aesop's fables so y'all can read on your own, as well as the most recent vocabulary. So let's take a look at the calendar, see what we got for today. All right, we see for SFA class, we have our bell work for today, and we have the two readings listed. The readings will be the lion and the mouse and the fox and the stork, okay? So let's take a look at the bell work, see what it has. As you can see here for the instructions for today's bell work, it's a writing prompt. <clears throat> And we're going to do like a compare and contrast assignment for today. <clears throat> Excuse me, clear my throat. So, for this writing prompt, I want you to compare and contrast the fables, the lion and the mouse, and the fox and the stork. Okay. And I want you to think in what ways are these fables alike and how are they different? Okay. I want you to support your answer with information from the text. And your response must be a paragraph with at least, at least five sentences long, okay? All right, so we're going to take a look at those readings. Again, it's going to be the lion and the mouse and the fox and the stork. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to move my camera over so you can see the book. Uh, but before we do that, uh, how many of you have done a comparing contrast um, graphic organizer or like a Venn diagram? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about with uh, the Venn diagram. Okay, I see Rosalinda know. For those of you who don't remember, I'm going to take this sheet of paper right here. Screen Look it down real quick. Also, for people watching this on YouTube, I'm gonna put it on speaker view so um, the screen will be bigger. All right. So if you look at my screen at this paper, when you do compare and contrast graphic organizers or like Venn diagrams, you basically draw two circles. Okay one and you draw a second circle but the circles are going to overlap okay so you take two different subjects whatever two things you're comparing in contrast so let's say um let's see uh who's in here walter name me a type of job Is any type of job? Office worker. An office worker. Okay. So that's going to be this job. Office. Hold on, somebody's coming in. Worker. Okay, uh, Eduardo. Good morning. What's a, another type of job? What'd you say, Eduardo? I don't know. Hold on, let me, I'm going to raise my volume up a little bit higher. It's kind of hard for me to hear you say it. One more time, Eduardo. 
An electrician. An electrician. Okay. An electrician. Uh, good morning to everybody that just came in. We're going over a refresher of a Venn diagram to compare and contrast two different things. All right. So, uh, Walter, what are some things that an office worker does? do work on the computer. Okay, computer work. Or we'll just say computers. Okay, Eduardo, what's something that um, electricians do or something they work with? They have to take light bulbs. Um, they what? Braces. What'd you say, Eduardo? They have to fix light bulbs and breakers if they go out, and the lines if they get if they fall. Okay, fix light bulbs and different things that go out, right? Oh, fix electronics. All right, um, Rosalinda, what's something else a uh, office worker has um, does at work or uh, works with or has around them while they're at work? Rosalinda. They work on uh, papers that need to be finished. Okay, work with a lot of papers. Uh, Demaje Lister. What's something else an office worker might, you know, work with or do at work? Take calls on computers and stuff. Okay, take calls. Or check people in. Check people in. Okay, and um, Rosalinda, what's something else an electrician might work with or do at work? Uh, they can, they have instructions for the object. Okay, they might work with like certain instructions, like a manual or something like that. You know, for like uh, the specs of something. All right. All right. So looking at these two jobs, we know a good bit about them. We know office workers work with computers. They work with, you know, papers that they type out or print out. Um, they take calls and they check people in, those kind of things. And for an electrician, um, they fix light bulbs, fix electronics. They might work with instructions or let's say uh, specs or specifications or whatever, you know, in case they need to Look at a manual or something. All right, what are some things that both of these jobs do that they have in common? That's where this overlap place comes uh, to play. Things that they both do. So um, Eduardo, what's something that an office worker and electrician probably work with or do at their job that they both do? I'm probably going to say they both work with computers sometimes to figure out where the broken damage is, a wire. Right. Yep. Um, if you're at um, work at an office and let's say if the computer is like messed up, if it has some kind of error, you might want to try to fix it or figure out what's wrong with it because, you know, you got to keep working with it, right? That's part of your job. Electrician also probably goes around, you know, fix people's computers. Um, Rosalinda, what's something else that both jobs might um, have in common? They both use electricity for their job. Right. They both use electricity. You need like some kind of power 
you know, to operate your computers, printers, phones, and all that, right? Electricians, that's, you know, part of their name. Um, it's like the, the root word of the name, electric, you know, comes with that electricity. So they got to know stuff, some stuff about it, how power works and all that. Office workers, they got to know how to plug stuff in, obviously, you know, to work with different items. Electricians, they got to know how to plug stuff in or where stuff gets powers from. So this is basically what I mean. You have things that are unique to certain jobs individually. That's how you compare them and contrast them together, how they're unique in their separate ways, but also they have some things that they have in common, right? Both jobs, I mean, they're jobs, right? They, you know, get a paycheck. You know, they their job, so, you know, you're not going to work for free, right? I wouldn't. Walter, would you work for free? No. Yeah, I mean, you could, but I, I wouldn't recommend it if you can't get money. You know, why not? Um, I mean, they work uh, with people that, you know, just a bunch of different things, right? Well, we're going to do the same thing today with the two stories that we have for our readings, okay? But this is how you can make a, a graphic organizer to kind of set things up for your um, your assignment, of course, it's gonna be a paragraph long. So you can say, you know, for some sentences, uh, an office worker, an electrician are different, but also they have similar things, whatever. You can say the same thing with the story. This story and this, that story are different. Well, they have similar meanings or they have similar things going on with the stories, okay? But this is just kind of how you can set up your graphic organizer to kind of get your thoughts together. So if you're wondering like what all you can put into your paragraph and you're like running out of ideas, this is something to kind of keep your, your mind organized and focused so you can do those things. All right, but again, let's take a look at the readings. Again, the first one we're gonna look at is the lion and the mouse. Uh, before I do that though, let me make sure I get everybody down for attendance that's here. So Eduardo's here, Josh Lister's here. Uh, Banks just came in. Yeah, I think this is everybody. All right. So again, let's start off with the um, let's start off with the lion and the mouse. Okay, I think we've read this before, but we're gonna just read it again, you know. Anyway, just for the sake of this assignment. All right. The lion and the mouse. A lion was awakened from sleep by a mouse running across his face. With a terrible roar, the lion seized the mouse with his paw and was about to kill him. Oh, please, the mouse begged, spare my life. I will be sure to repay your kindness. The king of beasts was so amused at the thought of a mouse being able to help him that he let the frightened creature go. Shortly, Afterward, the lion fell into a trap set by some hunters and was hopelessly caught in strong ropes. In his misery, the lion roared so loudly that all the beasts in the forest heard him. The mouse recognized the roar of his former captor and ran to the place where the lion lay trapped. At once, the mouse began to gnaw the ropes with his teeth. He gnawed rope after rope until at last the lion was free. Thank you, said the grateful lion. And the quote at the end says, even the weakest can sometimes help the strong. Okay, that was the first reading. So next, let's look at the fox and the stork. Fix this page. Here we go. All right. So keep in mind what was going on in the first uh, story. And we're going to compare and contrast things in this one as well. So be sure to follow along. The fox and the stork. A fox invited a stork to dinner and slyly, that's one of your vocabulary words if y'all remember, 
and slyly served the stork nothing but thin soup in a shallow dish. The fox lapped up his soup easily, but the poor stork could only wet the end of her long bill. She left the, the fox's house as hungry as she arrived. I am so sorry, said the fox with a crafty smile, that my soup was not to your liking. Oh, do not apologize, said the stork. Would you do me the honor of dining with me next week? The fox consented and arrived at the stork's house, looking forward to a good meal. But to his supreme disappointment, he saw that the soup was served in a long jar with a narrow mouth. The stork thrust her long neck and bill into the jar and thoroughly enjoyed her dinner. The fox could only lick a few drops around the neck of the bottle. But he did not dare to find fault with the stork. He understood only too well why she had served his soup in this way. And the quote at the bottom says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I think uh, people call that like the golden rule, basically. All right, so in the readings, camera over. I'm gonna switch it back to gallery view. Okay, in the two readings, um, Quanisha Banks, what are two things that the stories had in common? From what we read just now, Quanisha. Ms. Banks, are you there? Remember, I can't count you for attendance if I don't know you're there. All right, I can't say she's there, so I don't know if she's here for attendance. All right, let's see, how about Rosalinda? What are two things that the stories had in common? They both underestimated the other animal. Right. The fox um, underestimated the stork because the fox didn't think the stork kind of knew what was going on when the fox was like feeding them not that much food. Um, the lion underestimated the mouse because it was like, oh, this is a small mouse. How could he help me? Then later, you know, the mouse ended up being able to help the lion out the trap. Also, in the fact they both had animals in it. That's one thing right there, right? Um, Dimaje Lister, what are another two things that the, or well, another thing that the two stories had in common? I don't know. Uh... Okay. What is something that the two stories had different? Remember, we're comparing and contrasting. So you can say what they had in common or what they had different. You don't know what they had different, Dimaje? All right, uh, Ms. Banks, what did the two stories have different? What'd you say? All right, uh, let's see. Walter, what are, uh, what's something that the two stories had different? You could say like just the animals themselves, right? They didn't have the same animals. Um, one story had a bird. Um, what'd you say, Walter? So I guess you could say that, but I'm trying to think of another one. Okay. If you can't think of something they had different, think of something they had in common.
uh, Eduardo help Walter out What's something they had in common. Walter, you keep thinking, I'm gonna come back to you. Okay. Can you think of something they had in common, Eduardo? No. Okay, that's fine. Let's go back to Walter, see what he got. Walter, did you think of uh, something that they had in common? Yeah. Um, What's both, that? Both morals have almost the exact same meaning. I wouldn't say they had the almost the exact same meaning, but they the meanings were kind of similar. Um, they kind of dealt with like favors, like um, the fox and the, the stork, they were kind of having like favors or like feeding each other. Um, with the lion and the mouse, uh, the lion gave the mouse a favor by like just not eating it because I, I'd appreciate that as a favor if you know if I was a mouse and the lion was like, yeah, I, I'm not gonna eat you. I, I'd really appreciate that. And then the mouse came back and had the favor of uh freeing the lion, right? So you could say like a favor, just different things that you know that go on in the story. But again, for this assignment, I want y'all to compare and contrast. So think of things that were different in the stories, but also things that they had in common and use that information to write a five sentence paragraph, okay? All right, um, that's basically it we're gonna go over for today. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me about anything? Okay, how are uh, y'all doing this week? Uh, a lot better than last week? I know the weather is like a lot warmer. Raise your hand if you like actually went outside this week, like, you know, yesterday. Dimaje did? Yeah. It's been like really, really good weather yeah, we yesterday. Basketball games. What'd you say? We played basketball yesterday. You played outside? Yeah, we played basketball. Okay. I've been wanting to play basketball. But uh, since I'm new to, to town where I live in Weatherford, I don't really know people like that. Um, so I might just, you know, practice shooting around myself before I do play with some folks. I don't know. Um, I'm definitely uh, more in the mood to go out and like exercise since like the weather is much better. Hopefully it'll continue to be warm for the rest of the week. Did you say you lived in Weatherford? Mm-hmm. I'm in, I'm in Weatherford right now. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yesterday it was really good weather in uh, Weatherford. I, I appreciate it a lot. Um, hopefully throughout the week it'll be just as good, Dimaje. Uh, does anybody else, uh, again, do y'all have any questions for me before I let y'all go? Okay, I got a question. Uh, Walter, what does uh, that mean for your hat, the SMG4? What does that mean? Oh, it's just some YouTuber I watch. Oh, okay. That was great. All right, then. I guess that's about it for today. Um, if y'all do have any questions, feel free to let me know. Either, like, inbox me or with me in my office hours. Or, you know, you can ask me tomorrow. Uh, other than that, I will catch y'all. Well, I guess y'all don't really have office hours because I talk with y'all all day. But anyway, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Hope you have a, a great day, okay? That's it for class for today.